Hey everybody, I wanted to do a quick video on the AWS Certified AI Practitioner exam. I've been getting quite a few questions about this lately. I recently took and passed the exam, so I wanted to share a little bit about my experience, the topics you can expect on the exam, and how you might want to study if you're interested in taking it. First things first, I've got a document here full of links and all kinds of resources for you. We are going to go through this, and this is linked below in the video description. But starting on the certification homepage, this one right here, I've got that open. You'll see what the official word is on the exam and the purpose of it. So it validates your knowledge about AI, ML, and generative AI concepts and use cases. And if we go to the certification overview page for AWS, You'll see that this is a foundational certification, so at the same level as Cloud Practitioner. Though as somebody who also has my Cloud Practitioner certification, I personally think it would help a lot to have Cloud Practitioner first, or have the equivalent knowledge and experience, before you take this AI Practitioner. Because Cloud Practitioner will get you set up with all the core services like IAM and storage and databases and VPCs and all of that. And that stuff actually does come up on the AI Practitioner exam. Incidentally, I do have a Cloud Practitioner course if you're interested, link in the description. But after you take the AI Practitioner exam, you'll be in a good spot to continue on to Machine Learning Engineer or the Machine Learning Specialty certifications. So that's kind of where everything sits in the big picture. Now as far as what's on the exam, let's go to the official exam guide. And if you scroll down, to the domains, you'll see there are five domains, the topics they cover, and then the weightings or percentage for each domain. And there is a lot here, so scroll through, look at all this stuff. There's also a list on the bottom about the in-scope services and features. And then, very handy, there's actually another list about out-of-scope, which is a bigger list, thank goodness. So these are things that you won't need to worry about on the exam. But take some time, go through this official exam guide. This is what officially is on the exam or not. But I also want to give you a simplified version, kind of my own take, the tiny version, if you will. And that's in this Google Doc that I mentioned. All right, so major categories of exam topics. Now, I've got five categories here. These are just the main buckets that kind of made sense in my head. These are not meant to be exhaustive. Again, the exam guide is the official version. But as I was studying and taking the exam, this is kind of how I grouped things in my head. So thought it might help you as well. And the bullet points that I've included here aren't meant to be exhaustive either. But if you look at the bullets and you're like, wow, I have no idea what any of that means, then you know you have some work to do. But let's start with machine learning basics. And most of this isn't even going to be specific to AWS. It's the kind of machine learning problems like supervised, unsupervised, do you have a classification problem, a regression problem, that kind of thing? You should know what labeled data is versus unlabeled data and what you can do with each one. You will definitely need to know about the machine learning lifecycle. So all the way from the very beginning of you've got a business problem, you need to frame that, dealing with data, developing your model, training it, deploying it, doing inference, and monitoring it. And you might get questions like, okay, you're doing hyperparameter tuning. What phase of the lifecycle is that? So that's just an example. And then there are lots and lots of different ways to score or evaluate model performance. You don't need to know the nitty gritty here. You're definitely not going to need to calculate a score or anything like that. But just generally be aware of what kind of scores make sense for different kinds of problems or scenarios. All right, moving on to generative AI basics. The big thing you need to know here is what's the difference between generative AI and traditional machine learning or AI. What are the different kinds of problems you would solve with each? You'll need to know the difference between fine-tuning, retrieval augmented generation, or RAG, and domain tuning. Or reinforcement learning from human feedback is also a big thing in generative AI, so understand what that is. And then prompt engineering could come up in various ways. I've just put some general concepts in here, zero-shot prompting, few-shot. You might get different questions about parameters. So what does the temperature parameter do, for example? or some injection attacks, what do those look like? You'll need to understand the basics of vector embeddings and the open search service. I do have a video out on the channel to create a chatbot using Lex and Bedrock, and it goes into these vector embeddings a little bit. You don't necessarily need to watch the whole video, but there is a timestamp in there if you want to understand the basics of those. 
You'll definitely need to know general concepts about least effort or lowest operational overhead or lowest cost. So if you had to choose between fine-tuning a model and doing RAG, for instance, which one of those would be the lowest cost? And then you get questions around responsible AI as well. All right, let's scroll down to the next bucket that I have here, which is SageMaker. This is a really important one. SageMaker is really the core service for machine learning in AWS. And there are lots and lots of different features and capabilities that you should understand at a high level. Now, I don't have videos for all of these on the channel, but where I do, I have linked them. So Data Wrangler, Feature Store. For the things that I don't have videos on, I've just included a link to the Amazon documentation. Full disclosure, some of the SageMaker videos are slightly outdated. The UI has changed quite a bit, but the concept should still be the same, so hopefully helpful. There are also different versions of SageMaker. So SageMaker Canvas, for example, is more for the non-technical folks, the business analysts, for example. So if you don't know how to code or you don't have a data science background, that's the version you would be in. And then there's also SageMaker Studio Lab, which is kind of a light version of SageMaker, and it's actually free. So I've included those in case you need the basics around SageMaker. All right, now moving on to the other AI and ML services within AWS, you need to know the major services and importantly, their use cases. Here again, I've included links to either a video on my channel or just the documentation out on AWS. But here you can expect the questions to be about a use case and then you need to answer which service to use. So if you're trying to do image recognition, for example, you would use recognition with a K. Or if you're trying to build a chat bot, you'd probably use Lex. If you've got a bunch of PDF documents and you need to extract data from them and make sense of the data, you would use Textract to extract the data and then Comprehend to make sense of it. So those kinds of questions. And then a special call out for Bedrock here. So Bedrock is the core service for generative AI. And it's going to come up quite a bit on the exam, so make sure you spend some time there and also understand what foundational models are and how you might use them. Okay, and then we have the other core AWS services. And I was actually a little surprised by some of the questions in this area. They're really testing your overall knowledge of AWS and not just the AI and ML pieces. For example, if you have a bunch of data files that you need to use with SageMaker, where would you put those? Well, probably in S3. Or if you need to keep communication inside of AWS and not go over the public internet, how does that work? So for that example, you'll need to know some things about VPCs. And the services I've listed here are just the ones that stood out. Again, the exam guide's got the complete list. There's not going to be a ton of questions like this, but I would say it's enough to make the difference between passing or failing the exam. So don't think that you can just focus on the AI and ML services, but you need a broad understanding of the other services as well. All right, next, let's look at how to study. Or actually, next, give me a thumbs up on this video if you're finding it helpful so far. I would super appreciate it. It lets YouTube know that it's worth sharing with other people. Thanks so much. Okay, how to study and what resources to use. Well, I hope to create additional content in the coming weeks and months, but it's not going to happen overnight. So I'll point you to some other things, but I'm going to break this into two groups, depending on your background and your experience. So if you're a total newbie to all of this, I would recommend following the AWS four-step plan. This is linked on the official homepage, but I've also got it open right here. This is out on skillbuilder.aws. You will need a separate account for this and a builder ID. But out here, you'll see the four different steps, and there's a ton of content here, as you can see. But very importantly, I will point out that some of it is free. You see this message up here about an individual subscription, but you don't have to sign up for that at all if you're only going to take the free content. And you'll see the cost here is free or paid. There's a lot of good content that's free. If you decide you want to go the paid version, and you're lucky enough to maybe be on a company subscription or something like that, then yay, good for you. But if you need an individual subscription, you will need to sign up for the $29 a month. But that is just a monthly commitment. You're not locked into a year or anything like that. So you can cancel at the end of a month. Maybe just cram and do a whole bunch of study for a month and then cancel your subscription when you're done. And the whole thing would cost you $29. But at the very least, I would really recommend going through the official practice questions right here. These are totally free. You're going to get 20 questions. And these are really a good gauge of how well you're understanding the concepts. 
and the testing software, the format of the questions, and all of that is very similar to what you'll see on the actual exam. Now this is in a different system as well. You'll need to go through a few different links and log in and whatnot. But I took the practice questions. Once you've taken it, you can go back and review them. And what I really like about these is that you've got explanations for everything. So here's just one example. Here was my first question. What is the foundation model? Here were the four answers. I got this one correct, so yay. But for every answer, you'll see that you have explanations here for the wrong answers as well as the correct answer or answers. And for a lot of them, you're going to have links as well. So if you're like, wow, I really don't understand that. I need to learn more. Just go to that link and these could be a really good learning resource. So that was one question. Second question, you can go through all of these and just see how you're doing. So I would definitely recommend doing these questions. Like I said, they're free and I think really good in terms of format and just kind of what to expect on the actual exam. Okay, back to my document here. There's also lots of other content that's popping up on various platforms. I haven't been through all of it. I can't really make recommendations, but if you find something that's really helpful, feel free to drop that in the comments. Okay, for those of you who do have some ML and AI experience, particularly on AWS, I would actually say start with the practice questions and the practice exam if you want to pay for it. I didn't mention that, but there is a full practice exam down here under step four. This is 65 questions. This one does require the subscription, but it's just another really good resource in terms of readiness and just to kind of gauge where you are. I would say if you can pass this practice exam with say 90%, then you're probably in a really good spot for the actual exam. So I would actually recommend just starting there with the questions to help you identify the gaps. This was the approach that I took because I do have some experience with SageMaker and machine learning and all of that. And I didn't want to go through and just study a bunch of stuff without really knowing where I should focus. But I'm really glad I did this because it helped me identify some areas where I needed to brush up. And so then I knew where to focus instead of just generally studying everything and stuff that I might not need. Okay, so you've studied, you've taken the practice questions. Let's just quickly talk through kind of the mechanics of the exam, how to register and all of that good stuff. So you'll see the overview here. It's 90 minutes, 65 questions. The cost is 100 US dollars. You can do this in person at a testing center, or you can also do it online. That's how I did mine was online. And you can schedule the exam right here. This will also take you off to a different site. You'll need a separate certification account. I've got mine open here. And this actually takes you out to certain metrics. Now, a very important tip here, if you have taken a previous AWS exam and passed it, then you should have received a voucher for 50% off your next exam. If you've never taken an AWS exam, this wouldn't apply to you. But if you've taken something like Cloud Practitioner or any of the other ones, then come under benefits over here, certification benefits, and you should see your 50% discount. Just grab that code and you'll need to enter that when you go to schedule the exam, which you can do up here under exam registration, schedule an exam. So the exam you want is a certified AI practitioner, schedule. And it won't go through this whole thing, but it's basically a wizard. You'll choose where you want to take the test. You have to agree to a bunch of different terms and stuff like that. Pick your date, your time. Eventually you'll get to the checkout or the cart section. And if you have that voucher, just enter the code in there. It'll knock 50% off your exam. You'll pay for whatever's left and officially get it scheduled. All right, so back to my exam tips here. And these are in no particular order, but these are just things that I've picked up over all the years of taking lots of different certifications. First is to read the questions carefully. And I know this might seem obvious, but I have definitely missed some things because I was skimming through the questions too quickly. Pay particular attention to qualifier phrases. We've talked about these things like least expensive or the least amount of effort. There may also be more than one correct answer expected. When that happens, it will tell you in the question. So just make sure that you're answering as many answers as it says. Next, you can usually eliminate two answers right away because they just don't make sense. These are just included as a way to distract you. After you eliminate those, you'll have usually just two left that could be right. And you'll need to study those and pick the correct one. In terms of what is correct, and generally speaking, the correct answer will be simple. If there's a question that says you could do five different things with three different services, that's probably not the correct answer. Again, I'm generalizing, but that's kind of a good rule of thumb. 
And also, if you're given a choice between setting up and configuring something manually versus using an AWS managed service, then the managed service is usually the right way to go. So for example, I could use Bedrock, or I could go create my own model and pass in a bunch of data that's living in S3, make some API calls, all of that kind of thing. Probably you're going to use Bedrock instead. And that's just an example. Try to make your first pass through all of the questions, answering the things that you're immediately sure of. And hopefully that's the majority of things so you don't have to spend too much time coming up with the right answer. That means you're less stressed about running out of time. And by the time you're done, you've seen all the questions. So you kind of know what you're up against. For anything you're not sure of, you'll be able to flag it in the testing software and come back to it later, hopefully with plenty of time left. I personally like to make a second pass on all of the questions, even if they were easy on the first pass. Sometimes I realize that I misread something or I jumped to a conclusion too soon. Or sometimes as you go through the later questions, they'll trigger you to remember something on an earlier answer so you can go back and change it. Never leave a question unanswered. It will automatically be marked wrong. If you have no idea what the answer is, it's actually better to guess. That will at least give you a 25% chance, in most cases, of getting it correct. And again, I would highly recommend taking the official practice questions and the practice exam if you want to spend that $29. So that is it for this video. I hope this is helpful and that you can use some of these resources as you study for the exam. If you find other things or just want to brag that you passed the exam, feel free to drop that in the comments. All right, thanks so much for watching.